1962, one ballerina discovered that her chemistry with a new partner was so magical that it redefined both of their careers forever. At the age of 43, on the cusp of retirement, Margot Fontaine was reinvigorated by a new partnership with a man two decades her junior and destined to become the world's first true male ballet superstar. Just a few months after defecting from Russia, Rudolf Nureyev arrived and quickly took over the headlines. He was nothing short of a phenomenon and almost as well known for his glamorous lifestyle as he was for his dancing. His old haunt and epicenter of the swinging 60s, the Scotch nightclub in Mayfair, London, still survives. So with Nureyev's fame and, and around the world, he must have given a different view to what classical ballet was actually about for the public. Well, I think he's one of very, very few performers who actually changed the public's idea of an art form. He was my rock hero, and I would um, go and buy daffodils to shower from the gods. And oh, really? Queue up for, yes, Did yes. You? I had a broken wrist, and I got him to write Nure of Get Well on my, on my plaster cast. And it was extraordinary in Floral Street, where the stage door, it would be completely packed. It became full of groupies. Nureyev's success was sealed at a single performance in February 1962, the day that London's ballet world had been waiting for. The two most famous ballet dancers in the world, Rudolf Nureyev and Margot Fontaine, performing together for the very first time in Giselle. That was a complete sensation. I mean, nobody could get a ticket and there were 23 curtain calls, <gasps> I think. Oh, my God! Uh, and why was he partnered with Margot? He'd always wanted to partner Fontaine. He knew about her, even back in Russia. He used to get smuggled copies of The Dancing Times. He wanted to come to the West to, to really absorb different types of dancing, to absorb different sort of repertory. It was a perfect partnership in that they took from each other. If Nureyev was taking Fontaine's refinement and Englishness, basically, she was learning a whole Russian bravura technique from him. And she'd never have been capable of doing something like the Corsair before Nureyev. At that age? At well. that age, aged, yes, 40s, and he was half her age. Together, they were like two halves of a whole because when you see them dancing something like Les Sylphides or Swan Lake, I mean, you literally see the symmetry of their fingertips. They weren't watching each other in a mirror. It was just purely innate. They were meant to be. They were meant to be together. Nureyev, quite simply, changed everything. His dancing challenged the restrained styles that the British audience was accustomed to. He would inspire and influence male ballet forever. Rudolf is uh, he's kind of pioneer in a way of dancing with emotions. With uh, that, you know, it's not, it's not emotions uh, coming ah, like that. It's emotions inside, hidden, and it's like bubbling inside, like bottle. You need to just gas with gas. You shit goes. You don't think of how great you are, but um, you think you have a talent, and uh, uh, you have to exploit it and show it to uh, full value. What? Nureyev had, he had glamour. He had sex appeal. He had the manner, the looks, the hair, the eyes, the whole intensity of his presence. He was the great man who actually said to people, you've got to come and look at me. And they did, and they loved what they saw. I think Nureyev, the impact he made for male dancers around the world was massive, wasn't it? Yes, I mean, he raised the bar for male dancers from here to the moon because technique has completely changed and, and evolved. Because of him. Because of him. Uh, productions have had more dramatic integrity because of him, something like Swan Lake or Giselle. And giving the man also a better part 
in the classics. Exactly. I mean, making the man as important as the ballerina. And uh, we now take that for granted, but Nereev did it first.